You're old school, too. You, you yeah. kind of believe in this Dow theory as well. So just to Bob Pisani's point, we have the Dow hitting uh, very close to a 52-week high. We have the transports very close to a 52-week high. Yeah. And, of course, the NASDAQ as well. Is that definitely a technical sign in your mind that we're on a 100% bullish trend? Well, it, yes, the Dow theory is old school, and Bob did a great job of explaining that, and I, I believe strongly in it. Uh, the things that make and the things that take, it's changed over time, but we're making 50 new two-week highs in both of them, and we're about 5.5%, 6% off of all-time highs in the Dow and the transports. This is the leadership you want. Obviously, tech has been the story, but now, you know, the broadening continues, and when you see the Dow and the transport start to lead like this, yeah, we're in a secular bull market. We're, we're over 25% off of the lows now. Okay. Uh, this is very bullish. All right. Let's, let's switch over to tech just a bit. Yeah. We have some earnings after the bell today. Our Arjun Kapal just hit on it. Netflix is one of them. This is actually a very volatile mega cap stock. On average, it moves either 11% to the upside or downside on earnings. What are you expecting from this report? Yeah, there, there are a lot of things. From the fundamental point of view, you want to see how the new subs go, how the password crackdown is going. I know in my house, uh, I'm getting little texts from my kids every once in a while. They're having issues uh, sharing their passwords with their college friends. But, yeah, you, you said it. 11% on average moves. The stock is up over 185%. In the last 52 weeks, it's up 60 percent year to date. And we are starting to fill a gap from a technical point of view that I was surprised to see in price action yesterday. The stock was up 5 percent the day before earnings. So uh, the fireworks are going to be there. Let's see if the writer's strike, the actor's strike, you know, simultaneously going on will have an impact going forward. But technically, the stock is filling a gap. It looks like 500 is, is just a stone's throw from here. Uh, but 11% to the downside, that may be a good buying opportunity because it will still be in a strong uptrend, and you have a rising 50-day moving average as well. Speaking of uptrend, look at the bank earnings. We're seeing a big move to the upside for banks. They beat expectations. Admittedly, those were considerably lowered expectations. What's your view on financials? Not the earnings coming up, but just the investability of both big banks and also regional banks. Well, it's good to see the financials come back to life, come back to lead. J.P. Morgan, the class of them all. But I, the regionals yesterday told us an interesting story. I looked at PNC Bank. PNC Bank, from a technical point of view, that 130 level where it basically closed, is that inflection point where if you're going to get into the stock, the risk-reward setup is there because it has something to reverse. We saw it in Comerica, another stock that's reversing, and then the banking index, uh, the uh, BKX and the KRE, also finally breaking out. They're starting to see higher lows. And that bad news in PNC, the stock opened lower, reversed, right. and closed higher. That price action is telling me that, you know, maybe the worst is over in the regionals. So if you want to put some money in financials, would it be the regionals or the big banks? Very quickly. Well, long term, definitely the J.P. Morgan's and the Goldman's of the world. But uh, right now, if you're looking for a short term play, the regionals are giving you a good opportunity, risk reward setup.